Hi everyone, Alex Tardy here, National Weather Service. Quick update, we're still expecting rain Wednesday through Friday. This is your update as of Tuesday, December 19th. Here are the highlights. We are expecting significant rainfall, one to three inches along the coast. Some of the inland areas will see one to two inches, even maybe an inch in desert areas. Mountain locations, two or three inches of rain, locally up to five inches in some of the foothills, such as the St. Gabriel Mountains. Heavy wet snow for the mountains, up around 7,000 feet and above. The storm could bring some strong winds too, especially on Thursday with some of those heavy showers. Some of the rainfall rates with the showers and thunderstorms will be a quarter to half inch, with locally higher biggest threat being the coast, such as the Orange County coast. Now for the holiday week next week, we are seeing an active, strong, powerful jet stream. Looks like the majority of the rain will stay in central Northern California and we'll just get brushed by that storm. All right, for most areas, this is our first rain of December. We did have a little bit of rain last night, early this morning, but most of California, especially Southern California, is 25 to 50%, less than half, the water year rainfall we should have received. So it's been dry. Here is that rainfall we saw last night, widespread across Northern Inland Empire, San Bernardino Mountains, and even parts of Northern San Diego County and Orange County when showers moved overnight across those areas. Most of the rain was light, less than a quarter of an inch, but there were some locations up around a half inch of rain Monday night, Tuesday morning. New rain, this is statewide projection. You can see that Southern California really stands out. Most significant rain potential next couple days. Zoomed up in that area, the LA Ventura area looks like the epicenter of the heaviest rainfall where rain will be repeating itself going over the same area ahead of a slow moving storm. But uh, areas to the east and south, including the deserts will see significant rainfall in fact, a lot of the coastal areas between one and three inches of rain, most of it occurring Thursday into Friday morning, but we still expect a lot of showers and even thunderstorms on Wednesday. This is the first part of the storm. So this takes us through Wednesday evening. And you can see that the LA Ventura area, some really heavy persistent rain early on in the storm and then lighter but still widespread rain across Orange County, Western Riverside, Inland Empire, and even parts of San Diego County as showers go from south to north over this area ahead of the slow moving storm. The storm total is here. So this includes Wednesday all the way through Friday morning. And you can see some big totals potentially between Santa Barbara and Orange County in those bright orange and red shaded. The yellow areas, including the desert areas, uh, over an inch of rain. So we could see some local flooding in those areas as well. Some of the rainfall will come down really heavy, quarter to half inch per hour. Um, and some of the really big cells that developed Wednesday, Thursday, could be as much as three quarters of an inch per hour. So we gotta watch out for those. This is the areas we watch out for the most. The yellow shaded, starting early Wednesday, that's where there's a slight risk of excessive rainfall or flooding. So too much rain at once. Now on the right hand side starts early Thursday morning. You can see that expands all the way down to San Diego. Uh, shifts into the western part of Riverside County Inland Empire area. And also remains that red area in LA and Ventura County. So excessive rainfall prediction is what's shown here. Even though a lot of the initial rain will go into saturating the soil where conditions are really dry right now, we do see some response to streams, creeks, and even rivers. So significant flows should develop on rivers such as the San Diego and Santa Margarita River, as shown here. You can get the latest information off of weather.gov. Now this is a mild storm initially, but the cold center of the storm drifts east and south. So initially snow levels up around 8,000 feet, they come down between 7,000 and 7,500 feet up near mountain pass level. And then by Thursday, they come down even further, maybe near 6,500 feet, mixed rain and snow. 
And then by Thursday night and Friday morning, they finally go down to as low as 6,000 feet. Where it does snow, it'll be heavy, wet snow conditions. Here's a timeline of the snow level that I talked about. Starting off rather high, up around 7,000, 7,500. Then as we go deeper into the storm, the colder air comes closer, the heavy precipitation develops uh, on Thursday and into Friday morning, the snow level lowers as shown here. This is a depiction taken over the San Gabriel Mountains. Now, what's also with this storm is instability. So we have the potential for thunderstorms even on Wednesday, but also into Thursday. So this shows that this storm system itself has a lot of energy with it. It has a lot of moisture with it for potential bursts of heavy rain. The lightning threat is shown here. It expands Wednesday and Wednesday night, and then it increases and expands on Thursday into Thursday night, as shown here in orange. Here's a look at where some of that heavy wet snow will occur above 6,500 feet as shown here. Could affect certainly areas like Onyx Peak and even up by Big Pines. Um, snow levels should be high enough to be above Pine Cove, Idlewild area and even above Running Springs area. The wind. The wind will be blowing, especially with the bands of rain moving through. Some of the windiest conditions uh, will be observed on the coast with this storm closer to the center of the storm and also with some of the bands of heavy rain. So do expect wind gusts of 30, 40 miles per hour from the south. That can break some branches, larger limbs, and certainly can move around objects that are not secured. If you do get a flood alert in your area, understand these. Flood watches, which are in effect, come before the main rain. Flood advisory means just in about an hour or so, you're going to have nuisance flooding, travel issues, ponding of water, especially in poor drainage areas, slow down. The flash flood warning means it's more imminent, more dangerous, more threatening, uh, and it could result in road closures. It can result in damage to property and roads, uh, and it also can result in swift water rescues uh, if people are driving in flooded areas. What kind of storm are we getting? It's a slow moving closed upper level low. It's not completely detached from the jet stream. In fact, it's got a strong subtropical jet that breaks away. So the jet stream split, allowing it to break off and slow down, moving down into Southern California. It'll be very close to us on Wednesday, but it won't exit until Friday afternoon. It does have some atmospheric river, tropical moisture that'll entrain into it. And that's why its slow movement and repeated rain along the coast with that moisture wrapping up ahead of the storm system really targets areas around Ventura, LA County. But also you can see on the right hand side, it shifts towards the San Diego coastline and Orange County. The jet stream, I talked about this. We're seeing a split jet stream. A lot of the energy is going to the north, 120 miles per hour up in British Columbia, but 120 miles per hour is coming across the south into the northern Baja. That's going to eject into Texas in the Gulf of Mexico uh, next week. Also next week, a new jet stream, stronger, more consolidated, looks like part of it will nose into central northern California to keep that area active. But right now, what we're dealing with is a split in that big Pacific jet stream. Uh, and the subtropical branch is moving right towards us now. And here's the latest outlook. Uh, the East Coast and West Coast remain active holiday week, so after Christmas. That's that consolidated jet stream plowing into California. And there's the subtropical jet stream going through Florida and up the East Coast. So uh, the best chance for above average precipitation, central northern California, We'll get the southern end of it, it looks like, after Christmas for Southern California. We are in an El Nino, and it's a strong phase El Nino. That is the measure of the ocean temperatures along the equator. You can see it on this satellite image here, uh, large, well-established El Nino region. We also know that this warmer water uh, along the west coast could be an impact in some of the heavy rainfall that we see as well. It can enhance and make the rain along the coast a little bit heavier. You can see those bright orange and red shaded areas. Those are not El Nino on the west coast, but it's above normal, warmer than usual water temperatures. We also can see 
that El Nino has been doing its thing. It's been changing the jet stream, making it stronger in the central western Pacific. And finally, some of that energy is making it into California.